Happy glory, Resurrection glory, Day. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have a couple of announcements I want to make. Uh, first of all, we want to say happy birthday to Hope. I've already sang it to her, but that was before everybody else got in here. So look over here at Miss Hope and how precious she is. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And you see what her son did for her. He came to church today because it's her birthday, and it's Resurrection Day, Matthew. Ain't that right? This is Matthew and his beautiful wife and his daughter, June. And we're so glad to have them in the house of the Lord this morning. We're so glad to have my sister-in-law right here. This is Lisa's mama, Tammy. Raise your hand. We're so glad to have her in the house of the Lord this morning. She's married to my younger brother. Yes. Jan, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. You. <laughs> you thought she was going to get away with it, didn't you? You thought she was going to get out of here without Mama telling on you. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have Tanya's parents in uh, today and all Brother um, Marvin and Sister Diane's family in here. We're, we're just glad to have you in the house of God. Amen, church? Amen. Tammy, we're glad to have you in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all these beautiful faces and all these beautiful colors on. We're just grateful to have you in the house of the Lord. Um, now, Brother Jim, say raise, raise your hand, Brother Jim. I think your birthday was yesterday. And how old were you been yesterday? How old were you? Eight, eight. Wow. Hallelujah. David said, I was young and now I'm old, but I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. But you know the thing about David was he wasn't really that old. He only lived to 70. I done beat him almost three years. So that don't seem fair to me. But he thought he was old at, at 70, I guess. He thought he was old. I don't think I'm old. <laughs> and I guess it's what you think in your heart that, that matters, right, Pastor? Pray for All right, me. so <laughs> I'm telling you, though, yesterday we was both feeling old. <laughs> <laughs> we came and watched Summer and Mark get married yesterday. Pastor did the ceremony, of course, and it was so beautiful. But bless his heart, he was so tired that we couldn't stay for the reception. We just had to boogie on home. As soon as we got finished, we just had to boogie. We was, both of us were tired, but he was extremely tired. Um, so anyway, today's the day the Lord has made, and you're rested and rejoicing in the Lord and able Amen. to preach a message this morning. Amen. Amen. All right. I <laughs> uh, also want to remind everybody that Lydia is um, going to be April the 27th this um, next month. It's going to be April the 27th. Brother John and Sister Violet are going to help us with that. Uh, they're going to testify. But they both have awesome testimonies. And uh, I talked to John already. I didn't have ask Violet yet, but. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about that later, Sister. And Sister Chrissy uh, is also going to testify in that meeting. So if you can come, it's going to be at 6 o'clock, April the 27th, if you put it on your calendars when you get home so you don't forget. And Lydia is not only for the, the ladies, it's for the gentlemen that want to come as well. Amen? Are you ready? Are you ready to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's what we're going to do this morning. Praise God. Say it with me. Happy, Happy Resurrection, Resurrection Day. Now, I, before we get started singing, I want to say a little bit about Resurrection Day. You know, it seems like our government has decided not to celebrate Resurrection Day, but we're going to do it here. Amen. Amen. And until they put my cup, cuffs on my hands and drag me out that door, I'm going to preach Jesus. I'm going to preach the resurrection. I'm going to pe preach the holiness. I'm going to preach the cross. Amen. So is Pastor. So is Scott. Hallelujah. All right, church. That's enough about politics. Let's stand up and worship Daddy. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. I used to sing this a long time ago. Praise you, Lord.
I would have liked to have been there standing at the grave the day that he walked out of it, Pastor. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to see a day that's just as great, if not greater. That's going to be the day that he splits the sky and he comes for his bride. And the Bible says, he says, come up hither and up we go, church. I'm going to tell you, that's a great, great day to me to believe in. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. Lord. We're looking for that day. So now tell me, somebody. Why the necessity of the cross? Why the necessity of the death? All right, say it with me. Romans 3.23. says everybody in the world, past, present, and future, has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody except That's right. Everybody except Jesus. Now. Say this with me. This is Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. So everybody's sinned and everybody's wages are death. Amen? But the reason for the cross and the reason for the grave and the reason for the birth of Jesus Christ was to redeem mankind from sin. And because he rose, say it with me, because he rose, if I believe in him, I'm going to rise. Amen. They might put me in the ground, but I'm not going to stay in the ground. I'm going to rise. If I die before Jesus comes, I'm going to rise. Hallelujah. So I'm going to sing this song. This is called The Lamb of God. I want to honor him every day, not just today, but every day, because he, he died and rose again that I might have everlasting life. Amen. So we're going to honor him, not just on Easter, Pastor. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Hallelujah. It's A, Brother David. <clears throat> hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is called the Lamb of God. I love to hear my brother Chucky sing it, but he's not here, so I'm going to sing it for you. By the blood of Jesus, with your help. Love this song. Your only son, no sin to hide. But you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God, your gift of They crucified, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and
understand that there are churches in our land today that are determined that they're not going to preach about the resurrection. They're not going to preach about the blood of Jesus. They're not going to preach about sin. Well, I'm going to tell you, as long as you come here, you're going to hear every one of those things. You're going to hear about that here. Now, when we're dead and gone, pastor's dead and gone, brother Scott's gone, you might hear a different story here, but as long as we're alive, that's what's going to be preached here. The resurrection, the death and burial of Jesus Christ. We're going to preach against sin. We're going to preach the truth. Because if we don't, the Bible, Paul said, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Woe is me. I'm going to have to give an account. Scott will have to give an account. Pastor will have to give an account if they don't tell you the truth. I'm telling you, I'm not going to. Pastor Scott says it all the time. Don't pat me on the back and send me to hell. Amen. We got to know the truth because it's the truth that makes us free. Amen. Oh. I read this periodically, but I want to read this, and I want you to repeat it behind me, please. By this, I overcome the devil. First, I want to remind you that Revelation 12, 11, I believe it is, says, For they overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. So say this with me. I testify personally to Satan as to what the word says. The blood, the blood does for me. Does for me. Through, the blood of Jesus, Through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Through the blood of Jesus, all my sins all my are, sin forgiven. are forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus God's Christ, Son, continually cleanses me continually cleanses from, all me sin. from all sin. Through the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus I am justified. I Made righteous, made righteous, just as if I'd never sinned. Through the blood of Jesus, I am sanctified, I am sanctified made, holy, made holy, set apart to God. Apart to God. My, body My body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost redeemed, redeemed, cleansed, cleansed by, the blood of Jesus. by the blood of Jesus. Say this with me. Satan has, Satan has no place in me, no, place in no me. power over me. No power through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy. He went down into hell and he took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and he is alive forevermore, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us every day. Amen. Angie's singing, redeemed. We've been redeemed, church. We've been redeemed. Hallelujah. He is risen.
We are the redeemed. Thank you, Jesus. I've been glad you redeemed. You paid a price for us. Everybody say, have faith in the blood. Has so anybody just see where my wife is going to? She's praying for someone. Where are you at, Sister Butcher? She's praying. Oh, she's praying for people. Praying. <laughs> Who sings the next song? Two o'clock, give God another praise. Oh, yeah, I like this song. Shame is a prison as cruel as a grave. Shame is a robber, and he's come to take my.
Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If any man are in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live again. Praise you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand. How awesome he is. He is the resurrection. Praise God. And I promised you, didn't I, Pastor? Okay. Concern them which have fallen asleep. That you sorrow that not. That you sorrow not. As others, others which, which have, have no hope. hope. But if you believe that Jesus died and, and rose, rose again, again, then they which sleep in Christ Jesus shall the Lord bring with them. Yes. For the Lord himself shall, shall descend, descend from, from heaven, heaven with a shout, with the shout and, and the voice, voice of the, the archangel and the trump of God, God and, and the, the dead, dead in Christ, Christ shall rise first. First. And we and which are alive and remain shall, shall be caught, caught up. up. So shall we Together ever be. To meet them in the Comfort air. you one yes. another with these words. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, if you ask the if you ask the men on the street, most of most of them would say, if you ask them, do you believe in Jesus? They'd say, yeah. Most people do believe in Jesus, but it takes more than that to get to heaven. Yes, it does. You have to believe in the resurrection. You have to believe in the blood that it's big enough to save you. You can believe in Jesus all you want, but if you don't believe in the blood, that it's big enough to save you, and you don't believe that he's risen, and if you believe in him, you'll be risen also. You have to have it. You have to have it. Just believing in Jesus is not going to work. Amen. I don't think I need that, but anyway, this song was playing at... Hope's birthday party yesterday and we got and I think it was me and Lisa on the way back home or something or got a revelation or something that this song is not only talking about you know the dead in Christ that you was nobody gonna you know hold no way gonna hold my body down but we also saying this is Jesus Christ song too for his resurrection today because nobody held him in the grave he was up but it's also for us too in our bodies that we're sick and we're tired and we, we don't think we can go any further and that's why I was going around the thing he's not holding my body down I might fall and tumble and fall on you or something but I'm still going to go on <laughs> so hallelujah I'm sorry I just <laughs> we're going on with Jesus just the same ain't we church <laughs> God's unchanging man. How many know it doesn't change? Hallelujah. One of my favorite songs. Praise you. Time is filled with swift transition. And it is, church, every day.
you just one verse in the chorus. Uh, yeah, we can do King Jesus instead. I don't care. King Jesus Day. See, I can't, I, I, I got to have a little bit of, uh. <laughs> I got to have a little bit of, uh. um, by the way, while they're getting this ready, I want to thank Sister Mary. Everybody turn around and look at our beautiful, sweet Sister Mary and say thank you for filling almost 3,000 resurrection eggs. We're grateful for her every, every year she does it. Amen. Take a load off of us. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Want to tell them what we're going to do here in just a little bit? We're talking about what's going to happen after. Is it raining yet? Okay, if it rains in here, we'll. Okay, 
Well, I, I don't want to hate to break the service up like that, but uh, if it if it does, if we get bad weather and it rains, we're going to uh, put out candy, Sister Linda. We're not going to celebrate pagan holiday, but we're going to put out candy for the kids and 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 eggs filled with candy. So, but just so you know, uh, when service is over, don't rush out of the church. Everybody, stay in here because we got to get the kids out there. We're going to put you out there before we let the kids go, but we want to make sure the weather's okay. All right, and. Well, here you classroom. Yeah, we'll go, we'll, if we'll if it's raining, class. we'll do we'll do the classroom. Hide the eggs right. in the classroom. And in here. And in here. For okay. Little For the little bitty ones. All you right. may be seated. I should have told you all that, but that's okay. <laughs> and for my teenagers, you can go in the class this morning. We got cupcakes. Yeah, I'm not eating them. Can I go? Turn it up a little bit, Chrissy, if we can. Can you turn my mic? Can y'all hear me? I'm okay. Praise God. Usually I, I do something. I'm going to do something a little different this morning. But, you know, I've been doing, I've been ministering, let's see, uh, 1970 up to today. How many years is that? 30, 53 years? 54 years, isn't it? 54 years. 54 years. Uh, and, and, on, uh, and on Resurrection Day, I have preached the same message for 54 years, which I might talk about a little bit. But I, I, just, I decided to run up one that's just a little bit different. But let me talk a little about the older message. I may not get into the newer one, but I got one in case we get into it or have the time to get into it. How many is glad he raised from the dead? Amen. 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 Now, the Bible said that, uh, says that he that ascended first, I'm going to quote some scripture for you. It said, he that ascended first descended into the lower parts of the earth that he might fill all things, Ephesians 4, that he might fill all things. He said apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers into the work of the church for that to find the ministry till we all grow up into the head, which is Jesus Christ, that we be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine whereby men lie and wait to deceive, but grow up in him. Every part supplying the effectual working part to the measure, every part to make to the increase of the edifying of the body of itself in love. In other words, when you hear the word, how many know it's going to help you increase in God? Amen. Can we give God a praise? <laughs> love is the ultimate goal, right? Thou shalt love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and spirit. That's what James says, love your neighbor yourself. Usually I always start this Resurrection Day talking about Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is where they're celebrating Jesus coming in. He's riding a little mule and they're throwing palm leaves down. That's why it's called Palm Sunday. And he rides in as a king and they're celebrating him as a king. Of course, this makes the evil people a little upset because they're celebrating as a king. It's called Palm Sunday. That's why it's called palms. They were throwing palms as, as he came into Jerusalem. And then on Monday morning, he gets up and he goes to the temple. And in the temple, he finds people selling things, trying to, everything was all, all about money. So it makes him angry. It's not a good wise to get God angry. Amen. I'm going to say that to me. It's not very wise to get God mad. 
He goes over and he overturns the tables. And he says, my church shall be called the house of prayer. That's why when I named his church, I named it the house of prayer. Before we run the concrete, this underneath this carpet is a concrete floor all the way through the church. They were supposed to do it on the following day, but the day before they poured the concrete, I told my wife, I said, there's something I want to do. She said, what? I said, we got all kinds of Bibles. I want to take one of the Bibles, wrap it in plastic so it won't be damaged, and I want us to go over and bury that Bible where the pulpit sits. And so me and her came over. About 6 o'clock in the evening, and we dug a hole right here in front. It was all gravels, the parking lot. Nothing had been done outside. Nothing had been done in the church. Concrete kind of laid, but we dug, dug, dug the gravel away and dug a hole with our hands on our knees. And we buried a Bible right here. So you say, why did you do that? So I can always say I'm standing on the word. Amen. It's the word of God that gives you strength, that gives you power, helps you overcome. Monday, he overturned the money changers. Then he goes back over to the house of Mary of Bethany on the other side of the mountain. And every day he comes back into Jerusalem except one day. And that was on Wednesday. Tuesday, he goes back to the temple where they overturned the money changers. And this is not my message, but I'm, I'm going to follow this through. Uh, he goes into the temple, and uh, they're having the service and he goes over and he stands beside the offering plate or the offering basket back then. He stands beside it and watches people throwing in the money. And the first thing I think about when I read that, I say, Lord, what? What are you doing? And I realize that there was a purpose in what he'd done. He's watching them throw, and everybody gave of their abundance. But a widow, who all she had in her life was two, two pennies. She tosses them in the offering plate, and it moved God. See, when you, forgive me, I got the Lord on. When you, when you do things that move God, it moves other people. Can I get an amen? amen. It moved him to see the money thrown in the offer and paid the two pennies. And you, you ask yourself, why did it move him? They asked him, the disciple asked him, why did it move him? He said, all the other people came and gave of their abundance. And she gave all that she had. Sometimes you've got to go the extra mile for God. How many believe you have to go the extra mile for God? This was on Tuesday. He said, he said all the other people, he called his disciples around him. He said to them, he said, you see this money she throwed in? He said everybody else throwed of their abundance, but she throwed of her need. In other words, she loved God so much, she decided to trust him in everything that she done. Amen. 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 And that was on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, he's over to, over to uh, the house that Mary and Lazarus have. Uh, Lazarus was her brother. And he's, he's raised Lazarus from the dead. And he doesn't go to the temple this day. He stays in the house. And Mary... 
does something very unusual. She takes a box of alabaster anointing and she breaks the box open. She pours it over his head on Wednesday morning. And the disciples don't know what's going on. This box, this alabaster box of anointing is a year's worth of wages of what it would cost. A year's worth of wages back in that day. And he breaks, she breaks it and pours it over his head. And, of course, Judas gets upset. He says, why was not this sold and all that money given to the poor? Jesus said, leave her alone. Leave her alone. She has done a good thing for me, for she has anointed me for the burying. She, he knew he was going to pay the price. He knew the cross was coming. He even prayed about it. He said, Father, take this cup from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Sorry. Your will be done. I wish we all could say that. Not my will. Everybody say, not my will, not my will. In, my life, in my life, but your will, your will. be done. Yeah. It's a great sacrifice when you can say that. So Mary anointed him, and Jesus made a statement that always puzzled me. In the statement, he said, leave her alone. She has done a great thing. She begins to worship with the the anointing oil, put it on his head and wiped it off his feet with her hair. There, said she has done a great thing. And and I, I tried to understand that. And I said, God, I don't quite understand all that. Said Because he makes the statement. He says, this shall be a memorial unto Mary as long as earth stands. This is what she has done. And a memorial. A memorial is something that is done that reminds people of the past of some great thing is what it is. And he said, leave her alone. She has done a great thing. And I, and I asked God. I was talking to God about it. I said, I don't quite understand. You, you know, why was it called a memorial? And the Lord spoke to me. He didn't talk to me. And he said to me, he said, uh, can you save everybody in the world? I said, no, Lord. I can't save everybody in the world. This is a conversation me and God had. I said, no, Lord, I can't save everybody in the world. I'd like to, but I can't. He said, can you heal anybody, everybody in the world? I said, no, Lord, I can't. And he said, I can't. Amen. Amen. He said, I can. And he said, I said, why is it a memorial, Lord? He said, because if you, if you pour out on me what you have, and don't withhold it, but pour out on me what you have, he said, I'm able to save to the uttermost. Amen. If we will give God all our praise, can we give him a praise right now? If we can give God all of our clap offerings, all of our praise, give him what he needs, he can change this whole world. The devil's been trying to change it from day one. You can watch your TV, what comes on the news, and you can tell that the devil's involved. Yeah. And, and the people out there who don't know Jesus, they just go right along with it. But let me tell you where that path leads. That path leads to hell. You better get your mind right. Ain't that what's the first thing I told you, Keith? When you came to church, Keith had problems. 
and I, he'd tell me about them, and I'd say, well, the problem is not the problem you're having. The problem is you don't have your mind right. Everybody say, get, turn to somebody beside say, get your mind right. Now, that was on Wednesday morning. He didn't, he didn't go in to Jerusalem. He stayed, stayed in home. If I can keep from crying, the Spirit of the Lord was all over me. And uh, Thursday, Thursday is probably the, one of the most interesting days because it's the Last Supper. He's with his disciples. They get him a place in the upper room to... Uh, have have the Last Supper. And the Bible, starting in chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 of the book of St. John is all about the Last Supper. Everything in, in that Bible, those, those chapters, is in red. It's Jesus speaking there in red. Because the first thing he does, he gets up and he takes off his garments and he wraps a towel around him. It's a type and shadow. See, the Bible's got a lot of types and shadows. It's a type of shadow of him coming to earth and wrapping himself in flesh. Wrapping himself in flesh and he, and he died for me and you. How many know he died for me and you? comes to earth and he's in the upper room with the disciples. He takes his, clothes, his garment off and he wraps himself in a towel. And he gets a basin of water and he sits down and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. You know, years ago they used to have a lot of foot washes in a lot of churches. They don't do it much anymore. But there's a great meaning to the foot washing. He sits down and then begins to wash their feet. They're all, they're all letting him do it, but when he comes to Peter, Peter looks at him and says to him, Do you wash my feet, Lord? And Jesus said, Yes, I wash your feet. What I do now you know not, but one day you will know. And Peter looks at him and says, You'll never wash my feet. Then Jesus makes an incredible statement. He says, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Why was that so important? Because your feet is your walk. Amen. What do you walk with? You walk with your feet. What he was saying, and then he makes a statement to Peter. He's sat with me, church. He that is washed, Need only wash his feet. And is clean ever with whole. You see, the washing of the feet is what me and you do. We wash our feet. I don't know about you, but I do it every day. How do you wash your feet, preacher? You learn to repent. You learn to repent of your sins. He that has, says he has no sin is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Amen. You've got to wash your feet every morning, every night before you go to bed. You've got to wash your walk. You've got to get your walk right with God. Yes, amen. Put your hand on your heart and say, Father, cleanse me Father, from, all from all unrighteousness. Forgive me. Of all my sins, let the blood of Jesus may cleanse my heart and soul. I want to be right with God. How about you, church? Now, that happened on Thursday. They're in the upper room, and they I'm probably not going to get to my message they're in the upper room, and they, they, he's washing their feet. And it's a type of God cleansing you, and you can repent, open your mouth, speak out, and it will 
reestablish you with God. Anybody ever, well, I don't want to ask you to lift your hand because it might embarrass you, so I'll lift my hand. Anybody ever done something that that you need to repent of? Those that didn't lift their hand, God bless you. I like to have lunch with you. <laughs> I want to see how you made it through. We've all, we all have made mistakes. The good news about God is he made a way for us. Amen. He made a way for us. He gave us grace. Romans chapter 8, uh, chapter 7, up to, from chapter 1 to chapter 7, tell you who you are. You are God's child. Chapter 8, uh, from chapter 8, jumps over 9, 10, and 11 because Paul takes a sidetrack and goes talks about the Jews. Jumps over to chapter 12. When he gets to chapter, what, chapter 12, he begins to talk. Uh, he goes back to what he taught. There is therefore no condemnation to them who walk in Christ Jesus. Notice I said walk. How many of you walk in Christ Jesus? There is no condemnation. God don't beat you up if you make a mistake. God loves you. God cares about you. You have to love him as much as he loves you. Amen. He loves you so much he went to the cross. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them who walk in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And the word spirit's in the capital S. It means Holy Spirit. Pick your hand up and say, I need the Holy Spirit. I need to be endowed with the Holy Spirit. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, Thursday night, Early in the morning hours, come Friday morning, they come in and they take him. He goes to six different trials. And by 9 o'clock the next morning, they nail him to the cross. <laughs> you know, people try to keep nailing him to the cross. All the time. They don't realize he only had to do it one time. Amen. The blood is enough. They overcome their enemies by the blood of the Lamb, by their testimony and love their life, not unto the death. They were committed. It tells us in the book of Revelation those three things that we have to have. We have to have the blood. How many know there's power in the blood? Yes, power. Who can sing there's power in the blood? Anybody? You pick your hand up, Michael. Did you say you could sing it? Power in the blood. Power in the blood. If my wife is here, I'd have her sing. There's power in the blood. By 9 o'clock, he's on the cross. 12 o'clock, the land goes dark pitched black. The world's in an awful state. Jesus is on the cross. It goes black. The world goes black. Three o'clock that afternoon, he dies. He gives up the ghost and he dies. That's why it's called, uh, they call it Easter here. I don't like to call it that. I call it Resurrection Day. Amen. Amen. He makes the ultimate sacrifice when we believe in him. He made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Then on Saturday is unleavened bread. You say, what is unleavened bread? It's the feast of unleavened bread. There's actually seven major feasts. Seven. The first three have been fulfilled. First four have been fulfilled. Passover, that was on Friday. Unleavened bread, that's on Saturday. You have to go through the house and clean your house up 
take out anything that had yeast in it or anything that was puffed up but wasn't the real thing. You know, God's looking for real people. He's looking for the real thing. What's the real thing? The real thing is people who come to church do the same thing in their house that they did in church. You, you have to praise God. When you're home, when you're on your job, you know, I've been, I've been cussed out, talked ugly to, found out I was a preacher and made fun of me. I don't care. I am going to manifest the glory of God in my life, every day of my life, until I go to heaven in Jesus' name. I, I don't care. The Feast of Unleavened Bread was on Saturday. The Feast of Unleavened Bread lasts seven days. And seven is a complete number. I preached on seven the other day here in the church. The, the number seven is found 50 times. Seven, the number seven is found 50 times in the book of Revelations. It's found all through the Bible. Seven is the complete number of God. It's a fulfillment of everything. And so the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you have Passover on Friday, Unleavened Bread on Saturday. And so what is Unleavened Bread? That means you've got to clean your house up. Amen. And it lasts for seven days. Seven days is a complete number. You can't give up on God after two years. You can't give up on God after 50 years. You can't give up on God at all. Amen. Amen. You can't give up on God. Put your hand there and say, I'm not going to give up on him. No matter what I go through, I'm not going to give up on him. He's on the cross. When I think of that, it makes me want to cry. He did that just for me. And he did that just for you. He died on the cross. Some of the last words he ever spoke on the cross. And that's my message. But I'm probably not going to get to it. Some of the message, last words he ever spoke was, it's finished. When he was on the cross, he said, it's finished. And then he died and then gave up the ghost. So Saturday is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's two feasts, Passover and Unleavened Bread. The third feast is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the third feast. How many of you know he raised from the dead? Yeah. And is alive forevermore. He don't have to do it again. Amen. That's called first fruits. Why is that called first fruits? Because he was the first one to raise, never to die again. There were other men in the Bible raised from the dead. Lazarus. And there was a man over in Kings where they threw Elijah's bones uh, threw Elijah in on the, on the dead bones and the man raised from the dead. So there have been other people that raised from the dead, but n not one that never died again. Jesus is alive. I mean, no, he is alive. He is the first fruit. So you had three feasts in the weekend. He had Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits, which is the resurrection. Fifty days later, fifty, 
you, you know, I was at the I was working at David's place, uh, at the office a little bit, helping him out, and uh, I had two people coming in. The the guy was just quoting all kinds of scripture. And I was very impressed. And then I had another man come in, and he was looking for a swimming pool thing. And I said, you're probably going to have to order that online. And He said, I listened to you talking to those people. He said, you don't know this, but I'm a preacher. You know, God sends all kinds of people your way. He said, I'm a preacher. I said, you are. He said, yeah, I don't have a big congregation. I got said, my biggest congregation has been 17. I said, well, you just preach to the 17 you got, and God will bless you. He said, I was listening to you and that other man talk. And he knelt down at front of the desk where I was sitting. He knelt down on his knees. He said, you tell me about Jesus. I want to hear what you got to say about God and how great God is. I said, well, they just, just a few more days is Resurrection Day. I don't like to call it Easter. I call it Resurrection Day. He rose. How many, know, how many of you are glad he raised from the dead? And he and he sat he knelt there in front of the desk, and he talked to me for about thirty minutes, and he talked to to, to me about the goodness of God. He was hungry. He was hungry for God. How many know if you're gonna get what God wants, you got to get hungry. Amen. You can't just pick and choose a little bit. You gotta get involved in God. Amen. So he talked to me for a long time, and I told him how he could order the part that he needed for his swimming pool. And, and he, said, I, he said, I've learned so much. I said, well, come back and see me any time. He said, well, what faith are you? I said, I'm Pentecostal. I'm not ashamed of being a Pentecostal. Why, what does Pentecostal mean? He said that to me. What does Pentecostal mean? I said it means 50. Pentecost means 50. Because it was 50 days after that the Holy Spirit fell on Acts chapter 2. And how many was? 8,000 total finally got the Holy Ghost in one day. And I, he said, well, why, why is it 50? I said, well... It's the giving of the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all thank God for the Holy Spirit? Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. There was a law instituted in the Old Testament. Here's the law. The law said everything returns to the rightful owner. So it's symbolic of everything returning to us. What the enemy has stolen, God has given back. How did he give it back? By the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, by the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important that you seek the Holy Spirit. And then he said to me, he said, well, can you give me a little more information on it? I said, well, yeah, in Luke's gospel, it talks about the Good Samaritan talks about him traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. That should be the first, and that's, I'm talking to this man, that should be the first sign in your life that he was going the wrong way. Jericho was a curse of God, and God destroyed it. The walls came down. Jerusalem is the city of God. So he was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, he's going the wrong way. How many know there's a lot of people out there going the wrong way? Amen. Then I said, the man fell among thieves. And I said, the thief is the devil. The devil will steal anything that you have. 
Most of the time, he will just steal your peace. But I like what John 14, 27 says. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it to you. Let not your heart be troubled and neither let it be afraid. So I'm talking to this man kneeling at the, at, the, at the desk. I said the whole story lies in the Good Samaritan story because the devil's a thief and always will be a thief. Amen? Amen. But he fell among thieves and he was stripped of his raiment. He was wounded and he was left half dead. Three things happened to him. He was stripped of his raiment. He put him in, was put into poverty. He was wounded. The devil put him into sickness. And he was, I never forgot the other one, third one here, half dead, half dead. He was alive physically, but he was dead spiritually. He was left half dead. So then I, the guy said, well, I've never seen it. I said, well, look a little deeper. Let me tell you this. He said, then long came a certain priest. Doesn't tell you what kind of priest he is. He said, long came a certain priest, but he passed by on the other side. Seen him wounded, but he couldn't help him. He passed by. All religions have to pass by. They can't help you. Only God can help you. <laughs> he had to pass by. And then along came a Levite priest, and he asked to pass by on the other side. You see, all religions can't help it, and neither. The Old Testament was written by the Levitical order. They, what the Old Testament does, it points to a Savior. Yes, amen. You hear me? Yes, amen. Old Testament don't save you. New Testament does. New Testament talks about Jesus. Old Testament talks about Jesus in shadows. That's what it talks about. Like the tabernacle of Moses. You all remember the tabernacle of Moses? He had a tent that went around the ark, and in the tent was 66 poles, which held the tent up. How many books are in the Bible? 66 books. It had Four doors in the, to get into the tent. What, what are the four doors in, in us? That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the four doors. Once he come into the outer tabernacle, he had to face the brazen altar, and he had to have a wish his feet in the brass laver, laver. Everything in the outer court is brass. It's not gold, it's brass. Brass is the image of gold. But it's not the real thing. There's, and there's two things he had to go through. He had to make the sacrifice upon the brazen altar, the brass altar, and wash his feet, wash the blood off his feet within the brass laver. The brass laver is a type of God's word. What are you all doing here this morning? You're washing your feet. What's your feet? It's your walk. It's your walk. He had to wash his feet in the brass laver, and he'd go through the second door. Second, the second part of the tabernacle was threefold. The second part of the tabernacle was five doors. Apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. See, when you first come to church, you get saved by the blood. You believe in the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. This was a sacrifice. And you, 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 you wash your feet in God's word and it moves you deeper into God's power, God's strength. You can go through the five doors. How do I get through the five doors? You listen to a preacher. You listen to an evangelist. You listen to those. Those are five, five doors there, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. Inside that ark was three pieces. It was... Two pieces of furniture also. You had the 
You had the seven branch candlestick and you had the table of showbread. The showbread had to be ordered new every day by the priest. The bread is a type of the word of God. You've got to get the word of God every day. You can't pass it up one day. You've got to get it every day. Amen. The seven branch candlesticks are the seven spirit of God found in found over in Isaiah 11 verse 3. That's where his seven spirits are. It means seven attributes that God has. And then you have to come to the one door. How many tell me who the one door is? And when Jesus died on the cross, there was a veil hanging. They had the tabernacle over on the, in the temple. And they had a veil that stretched all the way to the bottom, from the top to the bottom. When Jesus died, the veil was tore in two. Tore right in two. The Ark of the Covenant was. They had the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat inside that tabernacle. If you went in there, that when the priest would go in there and offer incense unto God, they had to tie a rope around his ankle because if he wasn't right when he went in there, they'd hear him pop and hit the floor. And then they'd drag his dead body out there, out of the, out of the tabernacle. Why? Because our God is a holy God. The good news is, here's the good news. Now we have the blood of Jesus. And all our faults and all our failures, we can go into that third tabernacle and don't have to be afraid of anything. We can come right up before God in the ark. Jesus, Jesus, everybody say Jesus, Jesus. Is, the is the ark. Amen. Give God a praise. Now, there's three feast days left. The three feast days left is the Feast of Trumpets. It's found in, um, I think it's the 11th chapter of Exodus. There's, they had the Feast of Trumpets. Had two trumpets uh, were blowing when the children of Israel left. One was the assembly of the saints, and the second trumpet was the journeying was the journeying of the camp. It's a type of what we're going to do. The first trumpet is we assemble before God. The second trumpet is the journeying of the camp. How many know one day, hallelujah, we're going to journey out of this place and fly away to heaven. Can I get an amen? amen. So there was three, the Feast of Trumpets, and the third, the next one. These three have to be fulfilled. Feast of Trumpets, the, the Day of, to of Atonement. In other words, that's found in Matthew 24. Everybody, I don't care how much money you've got, I don't care how pretty you are or how handsome you are, no matter what you have, everybody is going to have to give an account to God. Amen. Now, you that are in heaven doing the rapture, you ain't got a thing to worry about because you made it. But all those on the earth will have to stand. That's found in Matthew 24. Is where that's, if you want to read about it, it's in Matthew 24. It's the judgment of those people on earth when Jesus comes back. He's coming back twice. He's coming back in the air and we'll go to meet him. And then he's coming back to rule as king of kings and as lord of lords on this Amen. earth. Amen. Can we give him a praise? Amen. And can I get the musicians to work their way up here, please? They're good. They're, they're, then you have the... Uh, Flying away. And then the seventh feast is tabernacles. That's when God comes back. And we have tabernacles. In the Old Testament, they had to build tabernacles of uh, 
with branches and olive branches, and they had to live in there for a couple of days doing that feast. But, but, but when we come back with Jesus, we're going to live on streets of gold. Amen. How many know we're going to live on streets of gold? Since i got five minutes, since I didn't preach my message, I'm going to preach it to you right now. Or I'm going to read it to you. I can't preach it. We'll be here all day. I wrote down a message called, What is Finished? And I had the scripture right here. After these, therefore, I, had no, I got to put my glasses on it because I can't see. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it, everybody say, it is, finished. it is finished. He don't have to die no more. He's alive forevermore. Amen. And our faith in him is going to keep us alive forevermore. Amen. It is finished. And I wrote down here, well, what is finished? What is finished? And the Greek word for finish is the word tell, tell, less tie, 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 AI is what's the Greek word for it. And I wrote down 12 things. Fulfill, what is finished? Fulfillment of all scripture of the sufferings of Christ. 1 Peter 3, 17, 18. The defeat of Satan. How many glad about that? Hebrews 2, 14, 15. The breaking down of the wall of partition, partition to make Jews and Gentiles one. Ephesians 2, 14, 16. These are things that God accomplished on the cross when he died. Way for personal access to God. How many know you can get him in your car? You can get him kneeling beside your bed? You can get him talking to somebody. Personal access for God. Hebrews 10, 19, 22. Yeah, David, give me some music. Romans 5, 12, and 15. Can, everybody say cancellation of the reign of death. We ought to give God a praise for that. First Corinthians 15, 51 through 54. Everybody say, cancellation, cancellation. of sin's power. Sin's power. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 2, 8 and 11. Demonstration of obedience and love to death. He demonstrates by going on the cross that he loved us. Even unto his death, he loved us. He paid the price. What a price. What a price. What a price, church. What a price. What a price. Hebrews 2, 9 and 10. Perfection of Christ. He was already perfect. But he had to get rid of that body to be perfect. Revelations 5, 8 and 10. We are saved from all sin. When he died on the cross, and we believe in that, we are saved from all sins. Say that, man. We are saved from all sins. Colossians 1, 20 through 22. His death was making a peace between God and I have peace. I have faith in God. Faith in God gives me peace. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. The, everybody say with me, the cancellation of the mortgage claim of Satan and freeing of man and his dominion from sin and sin. How many know when you get the blood, you are free? Whom the Son set free is free indeed. Amen. 
Acts 2, verse 38. Say it with me. A way for the full endowment of power and the full anointing of the Holy Spirit when Jesus died on the cross for us. Give God one more praise. Can you sing a song for me? If you have, I'm going to turn it over to Scott here. Amen. Let's give God another praise. Amen. Somebody, uh, if you would, maybe Lisa, if you don't mind real quickly, run out there and grab Michelle for me or Chrissy. I'm sorry, honey. I appreciate your help with that. Um, Pastor Gary was talking right towards the end of the service there about 50 and how Pentecost means 50. It also means 180 to turn the other way. And if you're in the church today, I know the whole world is celebrating uh, a lot of them, most of them should be, or they all should be celebrating the resurrection of Christ. But there's a lot of them that's not. They, there's a lot of them celebrate tradition. And, and the whole point behind it is to get to heaven, you've got to be born again. And to be born again, when you get reborn and you get the new body and new spirit, you get your mind right and you get saved and you're continually washing your walk with God throughout your life, it's when you, when, you, when you do find yourself going down the wrong way, you got to turn around and go the other way. And, and I think too many times we give too much power to Satan. Salvation's a choice. God doesn't send anybody to hell. If someone goes to hell, it's because that's where they, they chose to go for not serving the Lord. But, but everybody will hold an account. God's going to ask you, what did you do with my son Jesus while you were on this earth? If you're in here this morning or you're watching us live, uh, I would, my prayer for you is that you find Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and help you along the way. I don't know if you can tell, I'm sure many of you can, but, but things have gotten so bad, just in general, the, the, the absolute takeover of evil in our world. And I'm not talking about politics, I'm talking about the move of Satan. And, and we we got to do something for our children, church. we got to do something for our friends and our family. If you don't do nothing, stand on the truth in God's word. Tell them, without Jesus, there's a hell that you're going to receive. Because heaven is real and hell is real. If you're in here this morning and you don't know Jesus, you have to know this, that Jesus Christ, if you was the only one, the only person on this earth, walking this earth, he still would have willingly climbed on that cross to give to you salvation. And if you're in here and you haven't been living with God or you're not sure where you're going, you have your answer. If you're not absolutely sure that you're going to make it to heaven, then you have your answer. And it is so simple and so easy. All you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me my sins. And then you have to make it a point to serve him, give him glory, worship him. Until he either comes back or you die through the ground. I was thinking about my mother, my, my birth mother. She died some years ago, and I got to live the last, spend the last two days, two years of her life with her. And my mother didn't serve the Lord for the longest time. But we had a conversation at the table one day, and she said at the table, she said, she said, Scott, I don't, I don't know, I really don't know if I'm going to heaven. And as hard as it was for me to tell her, I said, then you already know where you're going. And she said, but I don't want to go there. I want to go to heaven. And if you knew when God was coming back, you could live like you wanted to until that moment, but you don't. He may come back today. He might come back tomorrow. He might come back next week. He might come back in 10 years, 100 years. Or that. You don't know. But be sure he's coming. And my prayer for you is that you're ready when he is. And he's such a gracious and merciful God. That if you're in here today or you're listening and watching us live, you cannot get so far away from God that you can't get back. As long as you got breath, God will take you. And he'll take you right where you are. I've heard so many people say, well, if I could just stop this or stop that or give up this or stop doing drugs or quit drinking alcohol or quit living this lascivious life, away with all that foolishness and come to God. Because if you could quit on your own, you would have already done it. 
God will take you right here. I can't tell you the people I've told. If you've got to hit that line out there in the parking lot or pop the top on that bottle, you hit it, but you keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming until one day you feel the tug in your heart from the Holy Spirit. And he says, come. Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened. Come. He only gave Peter one word. He said, come. If you're in here this morning, my plea for you is for you to come to this altar and give your life to Jesus. Bow your head, let's pray. Father, I pray for anybody in the church, anybody watching live, Father God, I just ask in the name of your son, Jesus, let them feel the love that you've given to all of us, Lord. Let them see, Father God, that you love them right where they are, Father God. Let them know that you have power over all sin, death, hell, and the grave, Father God, and that you are alive and well, and one day you will return. You are an awesome God. You are worthy of all praise, Father God. And this Easter, this Resurrection Sunday, God, I give you the praise, Father. I give you the glory, and I thank you most of all, Father, for your son Jesus, who died on the cross to give to us eternal life. If you believe Jesus died for you, would you give him praise? Stand up and magnify the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to dismiss you. Thank you to those of you that are watching live.